Godzilla Black. got some lovely surprises for some lovely people here tonight but first I want to talk about collecting now don't worry I'm not gonna come round with me at all right <laughs> a friend of mine collects chamber pots she's got over 200 I mean you could say she's potty about potties and there's a certain man sitting here right here in our audience tonight and he collects badges Yes, badges. Surprise, surprise, it's you, Steve Rizel. Where are you, Steve? Where are you, Chuck? Yes, it's you I'm talking about, sweetheart. Come down and join me, please, on the Silla Sofa. Well, it was your dear wife Donna up there who wrote and told me all about you. Because mm. you do collect badges, don't yes, you? I certainly do. Yeah. How long have you been collecting badges? Quite a few years now. Well, your dear wife says that she loves you dearly and you're very brave and you're always caring for other people. And quite recently, quite recently, you were Hero of the Month right, in your yeah. local paper. Yes, that's right. Now, tell us about that. How did you get Hero of the Month Award? Um, I do, as you said, various charity work um, for our local hospital, uh, for the baby unit. Well, tell us about the time when you were sweeping up the roads and you saw this lovely old lady, but uh, she'd collapsed in her drive, hadn't she? That's right. Um, she was laying on her pathway, uh, tor torrential rain, and it was during the ambulance strike, and... Um, we phoned the local hospital, um, which they said they couldn't tell how long a police vehicle could arrive. Um, so just to make her comfortable, which I did, I took off the big coat that I had, kept her dry, and uh, about an hour later, the police arrived and we got her off to hospital and she had a broken hip. Oh, she did. Oh, well, Steve, we need more heroes like you, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> you collect badges and we've made our very own, just for you, our very special hero award. Surprise hero, look at that. <laughs> and you can add that to your collection because it's only one of its kind, you know. Yeah, Wear you. it with pride, all thank right, you very Steve? Much now, there's a certain other badge that you, you're longing to get, but you can't get it because, well, you're over the hill. <laughs> yes, you are. I was going to say that, but yes. there's no other way. You're over the hill for this badge. Yes. Tell everybody what badge you covered. The Blue Peter badge. <laughs> oh, bless him. Bless his little cotton socks. And, yes, you are too ill because I believe you have written to the Blue Peter Studios. Yes, and I have. You've been turned down. Yeah. Well, we won't let anything like that stop us here on Surprise, Surprise, because we've written to the Blue Peter Studios as well. We pulled out all the stops, and surprise, surprise, you are going to get that Blue Peter badge right here and now. And here to present that badge to you is the Blue Peter lady herself, Valerie Singleton. Come in, Val. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Well done. Many congratulations, Thank Steve. Thank you. Are you thrilled? Oh. Yes, I am. Well done, Steve. Now, where are you going to put that badge? <laughs> it would be worn on my uniform for work oh. and then added to the rest on the scrolls that I've got. Oh. Great. Well, 
keep up the good work, keep up the good yes. charity work, especially for the baby unit where you live. It's been wonderful to meet you, and it's our special thanks to you, mm. Valerie, for presenting that special Blue Peter badge. Oh, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. Steve and Valerie Stingleton. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. in Welsh Wales is a man celebrating not only his 40th birthday but also his 14th wedding anniversary. His name is Paul Restall and he's a bit of a practical joker and I do believe he's somewhere there. Oh, there he is, look. Well, I'm going to give him a ring and see how he reacts when the joke's on him. Oh, it's a long number, it's Wales, you see. Bring it out. Good day, Sleep Morriston. Sean Reece speaking. How can I help you? Well, hello, sweetheart. Can I speak to Paul Restall, please? You certainly please? can, silly. Oh, One thanks. moment. <laughs> How do we know for <laughs> Telephone for Mr Restall. Paul? He's been rehearsing this, that fella, hasn't he? <laughs> Is it on the loudspeaker? Hello? Hello? <laughs> hello, how are you? Well, I'm very well. I'm fine. How are you, Paul? Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> yes, believe you better believe it. Surprise, surprise! It's Scylla here. Hello, Scylla. How are you? <laughs> can you see me on the screen there? Yes, I can see you, Scylla. Oh, you look wonderful. Oh, thank you, dear. I wish I could say the same for you. Yeah. No, you look. <laughs> you look wonderful. First of all, Paul, happy birthday to thanks, you. Thanks very much. And indeed, more important, a happy wedding anniversary to you and your wife, Cathy, there. Yeah, marvellous. <laughs> I've red roses this morning. I know what I'd like to do with them now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it just yet. <laughs> I, won't, I can't get out of yet, sir. <laughs> well, it's a good thing, Paul. I've heard that you're a bit of a practical joker, Paul. Now and again, yeah. <laughs> Now and again, well, I'll tell you, when your friend Carol was 40, <laughs> you stuck posters all over the village telling everyone how old she was. Well, I don't know where you got that from, but go on, I'll, I'll go along with it. Is it right? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Shame on you, Paul. And is it also true you followed her around when she was wearing a new expensive winter angora coat, barking at her and shouting, <laughs> Get that dog off me! <laughs> <laughs> Paul, it's a wonder you've got any friends left. <laughs> it's also after the show, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think you're wonderful, a great practical joker. And Paul, I have to say, you have blabbed your friends' ages to all the village, and I'm now going to blab yours to the nation. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Paul Restall is 40 years old. <laughs> to say, Paul, you don't look a day over 50. <laughs> and don't you do anything more about me? <laughs> no, I love you. I love you very much. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, as an extra surprise, Paul, here's a favourite of yours, and indeed, the whole nation here. She's got a very special surprise, surprise tribute just for you. One of your very own, Ruth Maddick. Come in, Ruth. <laughs> Hello, Scylla. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> You've got a very special ode to our Paul, Indeed haven't you? I have. Now, Paul, I hope you're ready for this, because I've written you a little ode. <laughs> All right, <laughs> boy? <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. It was 40 years ago today that Paul Restall was born. He lay there burping in his cot, <laughs> all red and wrinkled, half <laughs> along. His mother held him in her arms. The midwife said, he's cats. <laughs> his mother said, you need glasses, love. He's an ugly little brute. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's been a joker all his life. It's always been his wont. 
when they took him to be christened, he did a whoopsie in the fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're over 40, I'm afraid, Paul, and all your friends have made a fuss. So, on behalf of Scylla and myself, please, have a drink on us. Oh. <laughs> happy birthday. Well, happy birthday, Paul. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And, Ruth, what can I say? That was absolutely <laughs> fabulous. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Restall and the lovely Ruth Maddock. Two volunteers. Now, who wants to help me? Who's going to volunteer? Put your hands up if you want to volunteer. Oh, nobody's putting their hands up. What about you, Chuck? Would you like to volunteer? What's your yeah. name for a start? Violet. Oh, Violet. Oh, bye, bye. Hi, hi, bye. Bye. I'm asking questions here. I mean, can you do a bit of singing or a bit of dancing? Have you ever done that? Oh, yes. Years ago, though. You have? Yes. Years ago. Oh, years ago. It doesn't matter. You're my woman. Come on, bye. Oh. Come on, bye. Come with me. <laughs> You're my third volunteer, bye. You're my first volunteer. I need another volunteer. I need another volunteer. Bye. I need another volunteer. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. What's your name, sweetheart? Monica. Hello, Monica. Now, do you sing or dance at all? No, I dance. <laughs> you dance. You're my woman. Yeah. Oh, you come on, Monica. Come on, join by. Come and join us on the Silla sofa. Come on, girls. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Vi and Monica. What do you think? There's the audience out there. Wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. You don't know what I want you to do yet, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in dire straits here, I have to say, Vi and Monica. I'm in dead stuck. I am. Because, you see, an old friend of mine back in the 60s was going to come on the show mm -hmm. and do a song, you see. And then he dropped a bombshell. He said, I need a couple of backup singers. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> what you can't sing? Oh, you'll do for him. Don't worry. <laughs> can you do a little bit of movement? Oh, yes. Oh, well, that's all right, you see, cos, by you can sing, can't you, and dance? Well, I used to. I'm in a bit croaky now. Now, my very good friend has got a lovely song to sing. And he is one of the big, big stars from my heyday in the 60s. And I'm talking about you're going to be backup singers and dancers to his song, all right? And I'm talking about the one and only Freddie Garrity of Freddie and the Dreamers, ladies and gentlemen. Come in, Freddie. There he is. Hello, bye. bye. <laughs> Do you know something? I just realised who they look like. Pants what? people. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have lots of feelings with our Freddie and you'll bring them back later, won't I you? I will bring them back wonderfully well and ready to dance. Oh, lovely. Look after them. Ladies and gentlemen, bye, Monica and the lovely Freddie. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Well, now, not long ago, I went across the sea to Ireland and I popped into Blackpool in Cork to do an Irish jig and to surprise a very special granny. Oh, surprise, surprise, oh, Kitty! Oh, I see, just to <laughs> Come out here, yeah. Kitty, so oh, we can see God. your lovely face. Oh, my <laughs> I, I look at you every Friday and uh, Saturday night. You do indeed. <laughs> well, Kitty, you're just Don't as Don't tell me you're going to put me on. This is your life. This, that, this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> We're not looking for any men. <laughs> no, you're not on blind date, Kitty. No, you're on surprise, surprise. Oh, my goodness. Now, Kitty, tell me, is it true that you're famous around here in Blackpool for your Irish step dancing? I mean, can you still do the high kick? 
Kitty. Now, would you mind? Woman is seventy years. I'd like to take it back as well. Can you? Oh, there it goes. It's gone back. Well, what I want you to do for me, because I know you've won trophies in step dancing, haven't you? Yeah, but that was very And I know you used to go around with your family every Christmas to the hospitals yes, and yes. entertain them. Aren't they great black eyes? They never told me you were coming, no. <laughs> Wait till I see one. Well, everybody here in County Cork thinks you're an absolutely wonderful lady. And we, we thought that we should see your step dancing on Surprise, Surprise. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Good morning, girls. Good morning, sir. <laughs> now, I hope you don't mind us interrupting you, haven't you, uh, do do you? No. Because, you see, you see, our kitty is going to do the step dance. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yes, and I hope the boss doesn't mind. Oh, Mick, let's have a word with you, Mick. Hello, kitty. Oh. Hello, Sela. Oh. Oh. Now, Mick, you don't mind us using your uh, dresses no like problem. this. No Kitty comes in every day to say hello to me. Now, Kitty, you're going to do this step dance, but you're going to need a little bit of music, I oh, think. Oh, yes. What have you got for us, Mick? Well, we have Larry Williams on the box to play a bit of music. Oh, Larry, well, take it away in your own time. Good luck, Kitty. <laughs> immensely today and we every, everybody thought that you deserved the special surprise bouquet of the day for being fabulous wasn't she great yeah. Yeah. God bless you, Priscilla. I must dash now because I'm gonna surprise somebody else who are you yes Tara Kitty thank you see you on the telly <laughs> <Ta -ra! laughs> just through there a radio show is about to start but what they don't know is I am going to interrupt it. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to 2.45 Live with Alan Short. This afternoon, from the Arcadia Ballroom, we have a special show because we have a home and away show, a show that we've designed to, to try and link up people who have relatives and friends abroad who they haven't seen for many years. Me, and Alan! Alan, surprise! surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Be still, my beating heart, Silla. <laughs> you are looking wonderful. Well Thank done. Thank you, dear. But I'm sorry to interrupt you like this, but did I hear you correctly? You're doing a programme about families abroad. Yeah, absolutely. We're, trying to, we're talking to people from Cork who have families and friends abroad who they haven't seen for many years. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, could I pinch one of your guests, please? You're going to do the show? Oh, great. Well, no. not all of it, no, but uh, surprise, surprise, I'd like to talk to you, Eileen. Thanks. <laughs> I, would, I would. Come down here, sweetheart. Now, Eileen, I must tell you right from the start, I've had, I've had a most moving letter from your daughter, Phyllis. Tell me all about you. And she's been saying that you've had a, well, a terrible time of it recently because just last year, I mean, you lost your dear husband, Garrett. I mean, just a few months short of your 40th wedding anniversary, That's is that right? right? Now, I know you've got family over in New Zealand and indeed your Joseph came over for That's the right. funeral yes. and helped you through that terribly sad time. But I do know, Phyllis tells me that you were, you and your husband, saving up to go to New Zealand That's to see right. the family. That's right. Because you've got your daughter and Elaine over there. That's right. And indeed, two grandchildren. You've never, ever met? Never met the grandchildren, and they're expecting their third in May. I know. Now, do you have any plans to go over to New Zealand <laughs> No, to see unfortunately, them? So, but the, it's very expensive. It is? Yes. Well, that's good because, surprise, surprise, Eileen, we have flown all the family over from New Zealand to Ooh. be here with you today. Here they are, your son Joseph, your daughter Laurie Lane, your two grandchildren Rory and Lauren. Come in, everyone. Here they are. There they are.
think you better take a break then. See you in a couple of minutes. may not mean much to most of us here, but it means an awful lot to one man. And yes, surprise, surprise, it's you I'm talking about, Peter Ashman. Where are you, Peter? Come down here, I want to have a chat with you, Peter. Oh, two kisses. Magnificent, isn't it? What do you think? Now, you recognise this ceremonial uniform, don't you? Very because much. Because this is the one that they use in the lifeguards, of which you were a lance corporal over 40 years ago. Oof. It is, is that, that long? long. It is that long, Pete. It is. So you did your national service with the lifeguards. Yes. And indeed, you only got to wear this fabulous uniform once, didn't you? The ceremonial uniform. Um, it was a question, I think, of scraping what they could from the bottom barrel. And at the time, ah. because the, the regiment had been called to the ships to go to Suez, and uh, they were scratching the bottom barrel, I never really got to wear it properly. Ah. Uh, but you don't as national servicemen, but uh, I was in the armoured division. Well, surprise, surprise, you're going to get to wear it properly tonight. Really? Yes, you are, because I know it's been always your regret that you never ever wore it properly, and indeed you never had a photograph taken in. Well, tonight you're going to be kitted out in the full regalia, and what's more, you're going to have a set of pictures taken as well. That is magnificent, Silla. Thank you very much. Well, and here to kit you out in this very special uniform is Master Taylor Alan Button and Master Sadler Tim Mills. Come in, lads. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Does that bring back happy memories it for you? It does, yes. Oh, well, what are you waiting for? You'd better get changed, hadn't you? And we shall see you later, ladies and gentlemen. Tim, Alan and Peter. See you later, lads. As it This picture. Do you recognise this picture, anybody in our audience? Whose bedroom is this? <laughs> well, surprise, surprise, it's you, Aaron De Costa. <laughs> Where are you, Aaron? <laughs> Aaron, come down here and join me on the Silla Sofa. Down there. 
Is this a surprise, Aaron, or what? A surprise. <laughs> and that was your bedroom, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was, cos your mum wrote and told me all about you. And I noticed on your walls there in your bedroom, it was full of posters. Who were the posters of, Chuck? Michelle Gale. Michelle Gale? Oh, you like her, do you? Well, what, what has Michelle Gale got that no other pop singer has? She's different. She's different. <laughs> Is that all? You mm. like her, don't you, Harry? <laughs> you do. <laughs> Have you ever met Michelle? No. Well, surprise, surprise, you're going to meet her right now. Here she is. Say hello to your idol, Michelle Gale. Come in, Michelle. Michelle, in a word, he is gobsmacked. I know. <laughs> he is gobsmacked. But you, you have come along especially to surprise him mm -hmm. tonight. And I do believe you're going to dedicate your brand new record just for Aaron. This is for you, Aaron. Oh. OK, it's freedom. It's freedom. It's that special song. Well, if you stand in your position, I'll give you that special surprise introduction, all right? OK. Lovely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and Aaron, here we have Michelle singing her brand new song, Freedom.
Can I say you were brilliant there, Michelle, Thank and you. you certainly enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Aaron? Sure did. Yes, <laughs> you sure did. Well, I've got something, a little something especially. Michelle sent this over today for you. Look at that, to go along with your posters, to put on your wall. And I've just noted, ah, but it's not signed, Michelle. You haven't signed this, no, and it's not signed on the back either, Chuck. <laughs> it's not signed. So will you sign this especially to our Aaron? I will. And Definitely. where are you going to sign this special photo? I'm going to take him away and sign it. You're going to be taken away <laughs> up to the party penthouse suite with Michelle and she's going to sign that very special photograph for you, all right? All right, thanks. I've only one thing to say to you. You're going up to the party penthouse suite. Aaron, please try and keep it tidy. I've got to follow you in, Aaron. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Gale and Aaron DeCosta. <laughs> wondering about those bingo cards that you were given when you all came in, are you? Yes. Well, I shall tell you, we're going to have a bit of fun now. We are going to have a bingo session. <laughs> now, what we need is a good bingo caller, and we have got the best. He's former yellow coat from Macklin's. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Paul Shane. Come in, Paul. <laughs> Oh, wow. They're all excited over there. And the big prize is that magnum of champagne, is that it right? Is, yes, yes. Now, before you start shaking <laughs> those balls in there, a little birdie tells me that you are going into rock and roll, a rock and roll musical, no less. Yes, I am. We're doing a six month tour of one called Twist and Shout, the greatest music. I mean, our music's silly, the early 60s. Oh, yes. Great yes. stuff. Do you that... get to sing in it? Oh, yeah, all the time. I do about five songs. I'm loving it. Oh, well, I'm coming to see you. Oh, wait. Can't well, wait. Get, get rocking and rolling with those bingo balls there. Right then, are you, are you ready for a game at Lotto? Oh, I'm sorry, there I am. Giving me age away. <laughs> bingo? Yeah, are you ready? Yeah. Right. Eyes down, look in. And your first number is Kelly's Eye, number one. Number one. Yes. Your second number is Key of the Door, 21. 21. Give me a shake up, yes. Anybody sweating yet? <laughs> <laughs> and we've got, I'm looking for some 13. A 13. Oh, it's getting close. Hey, look at that. Legs, 11. Woo! Yes. 11. Another shake up here, yeah. What we got? Oh, wait, oh, wait. it's Maggie's Den, we used to say. Number 10. Number 10. Yes. And we've got two fat ladies, 88. <laughs> 88, ladies and gentlemen. Mean that in the nicest possible way. But of course, we've got blind uh, 50. Blind uh, 50. Oh, Is anybody sure sweating? Again? No. <laughs> hey? Oh, good, good. Right, two little ducks, 22. Quack, quack, 22. Oh, oh, oh that lady. That lady yes. in blue. You were talking about Maggie Thatcher, weren't you? Absolutely. She looks exactly she, like her from here. Does. Come down here, Chuck. Bring the winning bingo card with you, love. Keep yeah, yeah. Winner, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Stand just let's check the numbers, just a quick... Oh, yes, yes. she's got them all there, yeah, Paul. Number 1, 10, 22, 21, 8, 8, 11, 13, 50. Nobody will disagree with that, will they? No, no. right, yeah. well, you've got that. Now, would you like to present... What's your name, sweetheart? Isa. Oh. Isa. 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 Would you like to present Isa with the magnum of champagne? There you are, me darling, just for you. Congratulations. Oh, OK, and it's lovely. real. It's real. Well, it's not very cold, though, is it? Not very cold, Paul. Oh, that's very warm. It's yeah. very warm. You can't celebrate with that tonight. Could you put that in the freezer, I'll Paul? just take it away from me. I promise I'll and give I'll it you back. You can't let go. Isaac. Yes. OK, I'll go and chill it. And the best of luck with your brand new musical, Bless Twist you, and Shout. Bless Ladies you. and gentlemen, Paul Shane. Thank you, sweetheart. Wasn't that lucky? Winning like that? It wasn't half. Do you ever go to bingo, Isa? Yes. You do? How often do you go? Once a week. 
Oh, so you like it then? Yes. Have you ever won a prize before at bingo? Yes. You have? What did you win? A hundred pounds. A hundred pounds? Oh, well, that's that's good for some, isn't it? What, what is the jackpot prize in bingo? Where you go? A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? Well, what would you do if you won that thousand pounds? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> well, your friends tell me that you would spend that money on a certain ticket to go somewhere to see a very special person. Who would be that very special person? My who brother. lives in Australia? My brother. It's your brother. It's your oldest brother, Robert. Yes. Well, you don't have to win any bingo prizes to go and see your brother, Robert. You haven't seen him for over 40 years. Surprise, surprise. You're going to see him now. You've always said you'd like to see no. him before. As you say, it's too late. It's never too late, Isa. He's right here. Come in, Robert. Say hello to your little sister, Isa. <laughs> All the way from Australia. Take a break there. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> All right. for an Australian man, but one who has lived here since he was just three years old. And yes, it's you, Frank Barnes. Where are you, Frank? Come down here, Frank. I want to have a chat with you, love. <laughs> have a sit there. Okay. Hello, Frank. Well, a true blue Australian. But you I'm have been in. Blue, but, uh, well, you have blue. been in this country since you were just three, three years old, yes. and that was when your mum and dad, the whole family, emigrated to Great Britain. That's right. But you've had a quite a tough life, haven't you, Frank? Well, yeah, now and again. Because mm. you married over here and you had four children. That's right. But sadly, that marriage broke up, didn't it? That's right. Yeah. And you were left to bring four young children up on your own. Yeah. That's Is that right. right? Yeah. And then the other bad news came, was it 1971, when your dad died? Yes. Yes. So your mum, your mum decided to go back home to Australia, yeah. taking your youngest brother, Paul, with her. Yes. And then terrible news arrived two years later, your mum had passed away. Yeah. But you have had some happy periods in your life, haven't you? Oh, yes, definitely. Because yeah. you were a chef, I believe, and you worked at Pinewood film studios. <laughs> yes, I did, yeah. Now, did you meet any of the film stars at Pinewood? Um, one or two, yeah. I do believe, though, you did cook for some of the films, the carry-on films, did you do that? Yes. So your food has appeared in the carry-on films? It has, yes. Well, surprise, surprise, you are going back to Pinewood Studios. Oh. <laughs> but this time you're not going to cook for them. No. You are going to be guest of honour, their guest of honour. And we've got a special invitation for two, so you can take a friend. And here to deliver that very special invitation is the star of Pinewood Studios and indeed some of the carry-on films. It is, of course, the lovely Liz Fraser. Come in, Liz. <laughs> Oh, 
He cooked for me. He cooked for you, and you lived to tell the tale. I did indeed. Now, she did present. All Liz presented you with that very special invitation, and it is for two people. <sighs> is yes. it? Yes. And just in case you can't think of anybody to take with you as your guest to Pinewood Studios, <laughs> I've got the very person for you. Really? Yes. You haven't seen him for 25 years. He's come all the way from Australia oh, just no. to be with you tonight. Oh. It's your youngest brother, Paul. Come in, Paul. Say hello to Frank. <laughs> Isn't that great? Hey. Well, you know, you've got 25 years to catch up on, and our Liz has got the very place to take you to. You're going to the party penthouse suite as well. Wonderful. So have a drink on us, all right? Lovely. And we much. shall see you later. Thank you very much, Liz Fraser, and of course, the boys, Frank and Paul. Thanks a lot. <laughs> For Lance Corporal Peter Ashman to march back on. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 oh, that's brilliant. He looks marvellous, doesn't he, ladies and gentlemen? Look at that. Yes. Peter. <laughs> Peter, can you breathe in that outfit, can you? Just about, I'm melting Just a little. About. <laughs> well, I have to say, you look absolutely dashing. And we did promise you to have your photo taken. And I'm true to my word. Come in, Mike. Get ready to take the pictures now. I can't believe this. Oh, you can't? <laughs> well, it is happening. Say cheese. Thank you, cheese. gentlemen. Cheese. Gorgonzola. <laughs> <laughs> Smile, gentlemen. Thank you. Very well done, Peter. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Button, Tim Mills, and of course, Lance Corporal Peter Ashman. Thank you for Lance Time! Find the Well, I hear they're both ready and raring to go. Freddie and his dreamers are all tuned up, so let's listen to them playing I'm Telling You Now, accompanied by Vi and Monica, the Silhouette. Say 
a very, very big surprise for somebody sitting here in our audience tonight. And surprise, surprise, it's for you, John Hinton. Surprise, surprise, John. Please come and join me on the Scylla sofa. You sit down there, okay. John. Well, you knew there was something going on. Well, yeah. it's all down to your lovely daughter, Lisa. Mm -hmm. She wrote a lovely letter telling me all about you. In fact, your story, I have to say, John, is a truly remarkable one. Yeah. Yeah. I have to take you back to the time, start this story at the time when you were born. Now, your mum was unmarried, and she knew that when you were born, she was going to have to give you up for adoption because of the stigma and the circumstances mm -hmm. of that time. Now, on the same ward as your mum, there was a certain lady who she befriended. Mm -hmm. And this certain lady had devastating news because she gave birth to a baby that was stillborn. Mm -hmm. Well, your mum, after long consultations with this lady, said, would you mind taking my son on? And this she did. And she became your adoptive mother. Well, your adoptive parents were terrific with you. They loved you. Indeed, you loved them. You had a marvellous childhood. Yeah. But it's always stayed with you. You've always wondered mm -hmm. who was this mother that gave you up at birth. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until last Christmas that your dear wife Maureen up there started the ball rolling. Is that right? She did. <laughs> yes. She got in touch with the adoption societies. Yeah. Yeah. Told you um, your mother's name. But sadly, you had the dreadful news that your mum had passed away in 1992. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, yes, that was a bit of a blow, yeah, more than yeah, a bit of a yeah, blow, to yeah, say the yeah. least. But your Maureen never gave up, cos she wanted to find out whether you had any more relatives. Yeah. And she did, didn't she? She did. She found out that you had a sister mm -hmm. named Eileen. Mm -hmm. And where was Eileen living? In Australia. In Australia. Well, Maureen, Maureen did all the talking. Yeah, yeah. And she phoned your sister up and, well, Eileen was very, very shocked, to say yeah. the least. But there was a bigger shock for you and Maureen yeah. when Eileen told her that you also had a brother named Stan. That's right. Now, Stan did live nearer to home. Where mm. does Stan live? In Birmingham, Great Park. In Birmingham? Yeah. yeah. Well, I know you made arrangements, you and Maureen, to meet your brother Stan and his wife Dee mm -hmm. at the V-Day celebrations. We did. Gosh, that must have been an emotional it time. It was really, really, yeah. Well, you've only met your brother once. Mm. Well, surprise, surprise, you're going to see him again. Say hello to your brother, Stan. Come in, Stan. <laughs> uh, hello, Stan. Have a sit down there. Well, Stan, this is a truly remarkable story, as I've said. What was, what was the reunion like on that big day? Oh, fantastic. It's up to quite a bit of ale, didn't we? We did. <laughs> and champagne. <laughs> and champagne. <laughs> so you hit it off straight away. Oh, yeah. And I do believe during that time, both of you decided to ring your sister Eileen in yeah. Australia. Is that right? We did on the Sunday, yes. Yeah, we well, I know, I know, Stan, that you've only seen your sister the last time you saw her. How many years ago? Was it six years ago? Uh, four years. Oh, it was four, four years. years. That's yes. not that long. Mm. But it was only six weeks ago that you knew that you had a sister who existed. Well, surprise, surprise. Really? Surprise, really. <laughs> Your sister Eileen is not in Australia this evening. She's come all the way over just to be with the brothers tonight. So say a big hello and give a big hug. Here she is. Come in, Eileen. <laughs> Reaching out, holding hands We live in memories As we smile
that's all we have time for this week, I'm afraid. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken part in tonight's show, especially Valerie Singleton, Ruth Maddock, Michelle Gale, Paul Shane, Liz Fraser, and Freddie and the Dreamers. We'll be back with more surprises next week, so until then, hurrah then! Yeah.